this specific video is about a recent discovery that I found, uh, but a negative discovery, not a good one, as regards to a a problem on my on my PC engine or one of my PC engine units, the main PC engine unit. Um, I've got connected up here my Super CD-ROM 2 and also my Core Graphics 2 and it's actually a problem with the Core Graphics 2 and what's happening is that I am getting some some graphical errors let me just see there you'll see those uh, missing pixels and they are flashing and if I zoom out slightly you'll see various uh, places there where there's missing pixels now it's it's quite sporadic as regards to when you get these issues. Um, some games are worse than others, but actually on the Super CD-ROM system, a sort of main menu, it is really, really evident. You can see it straight away. But like I said, it, it you know if you put certain games in, on some games it will worse than others. Now I've looked on on the internet and haven't found a fat lot of information, but there has been a couple of mentions, and it makes sense to me because I know this is a symptom that the uh, RAM chips on on the on the main board of the uh, of the PC engine have actually gone bad, or that's what is being the suggestion. You can actually see, you probably see sort of flashing ones there on that run, and and it's. And it's actually quite bad in some games. You get a lot of vertical uh, issues, like you've got that there. Well, obviously, you can only see what's uh, what's on the character, but they can run all the way down the screen, and it can look pretty awful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my nuts, and I'm going to go for a RAM chip swap from another machine. I'm going to use my my Turbo Graphics uh, handheld, which is. Um, Sort of pretty much knackered, if I'm being honest. It needs a brand new screen putting in it, and not an original screen. And and it's not really worth pissing about with. I've got the PC Engine LT. I've got two of them, I should say. So what's the point? So I'm actually going to use that as a donor, um, a machine, which is pretty uh, radical, really. But 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 you know what? Uh, let's give it a go. If we don't try things, we don't learn anything, do we? So I'm going to get on with that now, and I'm going to uh, video. Uh, appropriate points through that about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it so hopefully there'll be some good news at the end of this but you know if there isn't there isn't Celevere. so here we have the guts of the core graphics 2 now uh, the RAM chips just turn that around slightly, are those two chips there and it could be both of them or it could be one of them and I haven't actually got a, a logic tester to find out which one is mullered or whether both of them are mullered or whether and they're not mullered at all so so ideally I would have checked them with a logic tester but I haven't got that facility unfortunately I can't be, I can't be asked to wait to order one from eBay so I'm just going to go I'm going to go for it I'm going in I'm going in now I haven't um, ever up until about 10 minutes ago <laughs> ever removed uh, one of these types of surface mounties surface mounted ICs uh, with regard to how how big they are and I've just successfully done it from the Turbo Express and I've got the chip here and I've cleanly removed it that is there so I've, I've, I've only taken one off I'm not going to take both of them off because I'm just going to try one and see what it does and I'm going to go for the right one uh, for no other reason than I'm right-handed, so sod it. I'm just going to go for the right one. I'm going to I'm going to change the right one here, which is that one there, with that chip that I've taken off the uh, Turbo Graphics. Now, uh, obviously, I wanted to do a bit of a dry run, but while I'm doing a dry run on the Turbo Graphics, heaven forbid. But it came off fine. I used a method that I've seen on YouTube, and I will actually go through that method now of what I'm doing. Yeah, so as like I said, I'm I'm sort of taking a bit of a a bit of a um, a risk here, uh, mulling up. Well, I could potentially muller up two units here. Right, the first thing you do is spread some flux over over the contacts. Now, for any of you guys that don't know what flux is, it's another fluff on that. It um, basically lets the solder flow nicely 
gets heat in there. Well, sorry, the flux doesn't get heat in there, but it allows the heat to get in there and it just makes the solder flow. And that's what you want to do. What I don't really want to do, uh, but I would have done if I had to, was actually reflow the solder with new so solder. But there's no point doing that. I just want to ensure that, that when I heat this up, that I'm not having the iron on there for like 15 minutes to get some heat in there. And I'm just, I'm just refreshing the, the solder, in fact. Uh, one of the bad things about having to wear glasses is, is when you get older you have to take bloody glasses off when you're doing detail work. And it's just as simple as that, that's all you're doing. And I can see instantly that it's reflowing there. Do exactly the same on the other side. Just the board around. Probably won't see this. Move it there. And I can see the colour of the solder and you can just see all the heat flowing through it. Great. So that, that's fine, I'm happy with that. Now, next stage is to use some desolder wick. Now, this is absolutely great stuff and it, it is absolutely imperative without a shadow of a doubt to make the job a hell of a lot easier. And and this stuff uh, just absorbs the solder and pulls it off the contacts uh, that the solder's on. Now what this won't do is remove all the solder because there will be an element of solder between the pin of the chip and the, and the pad on the board. And that will come in the second part, I'll show you how we get rid of that, or at least how we, how we free the leg up. Um, and something you've got to be really careful on these. I suppose for obvious reasons is the fact you can damage the chips and also you can uh, damage the pad on the board so you've got to be really really careful. So I'm going to have to turn this around and you might not, just see if I can see that, I'm doing that one, is that one? Oh, Burke, that one there, <laughs> getting to the end. So what I'm going to do for this is lie the wick down on top of the pins, like that, and I'm going to go over it, and this will get bloody hot, so I can't, I can't take too long. And basically, I can see it now, it's pulling the solder off, and this wick is starting to get a bit warm. You can actually tell because it changes the colour of the wick. Break. Don't want, to, don't want to store too much heat in this because, um, because like I said, it is a um, it is an IC, and you don't ideally want to put a load of heat into an IC. It's a fairly low wattage uh, soldering iron. If I'm being totally honest, but it's not worth taking the risk. And that's all it needs, it just, oh Christ, let's get, let's get it on. It just needs a quick, quick dab. And like I say, you'll see the solder coming off. I hope I'm getting that on camera, I'll get on to check I am. That was a nice big blob on that end, I remember seeing that. So, that's cleaned up quite a lot now, the soldering. I don't know if you can see on camera the difference between those pins there and those ones there. Probably not. But it has pulled a lot of the solder off. Now, uh, the chip uh, won't just come off the, uh, the PCB. And you could be really stupid and try and prise it off. And whilst it might come off, you'll probably end up bending legs, snapping them, and you'll knacker the pad on the board. And of course, I need to put a chip back on here. So I don't want to do that. Now there are special um, uh, chip pullers that you can buy that don't actually use a soldering iron tip, they use hot air. And it's a special fitment that goes over the top of the, of the chip. And there's also some, some special solder you can buy that is a low temperature uh, mounting point solder so it keeps the heat in it a lot longer, it will stay 
it will stay as a liquid a lot longer and give you time to actually actually basically heat all the uh, legs up and you can pull it off on one side it will stay it will stay in a fluid state well, not fluid but but you know in in a um, in a non-solid state for longer than what normal solder does because normal solder normally goes goes well, it solidifies quite quickly and goes hard quite quickly so what we're going to do here is we're going to pass some copper wire very thin copper wire, it's called carnal wire and it's probably a bit too thin to be honest so I've had to double it up and I'm going to pass that wire through through the backs of the legs you'll probably see that there I'll get a bit more and what I'm going to do is now I took most of the solder off, majority of the solder off is that I am going to now uh, put a bit of heat into the solder and I'm going to pull uh, the wire uh, towards me uh, starting from an end and work towards the other end and what it will do is it will pull underneath the leg, you've got to do this really carefully, you've got to do it evenly and carefully, do not rush it because you will end up uh, either breaking the pad or corrupting the pad or you'll bend the leg, you've got to be really careful, you've got to get the angle right as well so just take your time and it really isn't difficult, you've just got to take your time like with most things, and it's always a good idea if you can tie it around something because it will brace it and it means you don't have to try and hold it with two hands which is virtually impossible when you're trying to solder in one hand so I've got an ideal mounting point there and that will give me space now slightly high actually that is, I probably would have been better off putting it through the hole in the in the board but let's see how we get on so I'm just bracing it there and I just need to just just get enough heat in it in it that's it that's just pulled that through I don't know if you heard that go ding that just went underneath the leg So what that's done is made a gap then between the leg and the PCB. And you can see now the wire's obviously moving across because it, it's, it's coming under the legs. Now the trick on this is to keep the pressure even and not and what you don't want to do if you pull the wire up like that and pull it it will bend and snap the leg without a shadow of a doubt and knack of the padding probably so it's getting it at the right level the right angle angle of the dangle and and pressure Now, if let me screwdriver gone, I might be able to lift that side. I don't want to do it too much because obviously the end of the side is still connected. But just to show that it's yeah, that's pulling up. Yeah, the whole that side's coming up. So that's how you do it. So I'm going to do that on the other side now. Uh, exactly the same as what I've done on this side. I'm going to swap the chips back over uh, with the one that I've taken from the uh, turbo graphics and before I do that I'm going to clean all the pads up on here because they've got to be as flat as they can be and I'm going to show you the closing stages of that and then try it and see how we get on fingers crossed it might work if it doesn't I'm going to have to try the other one but yeah let's see what happens so here we have uh, the core graphics now with the uh, with one of the memory uh, chip RAM chips uh, removed so that's all this uh, all this area here uh, RAM chips have been taken off and I've just cleaned the pads up and they're okay to be honest there's no issues on the pads that I can see double check nope yeah they're all clean so I'm now going to put the uh, put the RAM chip that I've taken out of the turbo graphics now into the core graphics too sold all that back up uh, do it carefully 
and and give it another go and see where we go from there. Well, look at that, eh? Lo and behold, it's fixed the problem. We have no graphic glitches. Now, I'm going to run a few games on this just to make sure, but but as you can see now, if you compare uh, now what it was like before, there are uh, no uh, dodgy pixels or anything flashing or anything like that. So it looks like by pure luck that the the, uh, the RAM chip that I replaced was the one that was um, uh, faulty. Now apparently this can happen uh, uh, to any of the PC engines. Uh, RAM chips can just fail just like that. It doesn't appear to be a major issue or it's not an issue that's been uh, documented or wrote about. And like I said, there's certainly nothing on YouTube about it. So hopefully this will be of use to other people, but that's fixed it. So I'm absolutely over the moon with that. And again, look, there was a lot of graphical glitches around here, but it's uh, that's as clean as a whistle. I'm well chuffed with that. So it looks like I've saved my core graphics too. I'm really pleased about this because I wanted to get another one anyway if this had failed uh, purely. So I've got a matching set down there and I didn't want to use one of my other PC engines in there because it looked a bit odd. It's nice to have that full set. So that's working, brilliant. Hope this video has been a use guys and I'll speak to you again soon.